if there are many pastors in the world, what makes you different? What makes you exceptional? What makes you distinctive? If there are many worshippers in the world, what makes you different? What makes you exceptional? What makes you distinct? If there are many businessmen in the world, what makes you exceptional? What makes you different? What makes you distinct? The seed of greatness has a very deep vibration of interpretation. That doesn't mean that you will write over men to say, I'm better than you. No, that's not what God is saying. In fact, the Bible says, if any of you require to be the greatest, you must be least. But at least the kingdom of God has a definition called greatest. You don't take it away. Because it doesn't fit your structure, you don't take it away. He just told us to be least. The humility of the spirit and all these things are key in building the individual you are. Are you following what I'm saying? But God has called you to be different. Like in the world, we have, you have, for example, in your physical world, you have a different thumbprint from your neighbor that makes you different. But that doesn't make you exceptional. That doesn't make you distinct. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when the Bible says that you shall be the head and not the tail, what does it mean? Does it mean that you will only, does it only end in your classroom? That you'll be the first in class? It's more than that. Because some of the students who are first in class have not made it in life. And you can agree. When the Bible says that you shall be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. It means that there is a plan for God to put you first in the world. That you might become a light to the darkness in the world. And by that you might be able to draw many to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because if we are normal, how do we draw them? If we are predictable, how do we draw them? Already God called you a chosen generation, a peculiar people, isn't it? That you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That you should show forth. What makes you peculiar? The word that peculiar is strange. You are supposed to be strange. Not because you shout when you're praying. No, no. You're supposed to be strange because the results on your life are unpredictable. Are you following what I'm saying? You're supposed to be strange because you, you make ways where there are no ways. You're supposed to be strange because you make the impossible become possible. You're supposed to be strange because you know how to level valleys and flattened mountains that's what makes you strange you're supposed to be strange because you do things normal men cannot do somebody shout hallelujah that's the strangeness that i'm talking about but there has to be something that makes you different you must be marked you must carry a distinct grace on your life otherwise you'll be like everybody and God hates mediocrity he wants the best out of you somebody shout hallelujah if we had a thousand prophets what would make you different if we had a thousand evangelists what would make you different? Apostles, what would make you different? What would make you different? Is it because you go to church? Everybody goes to church. Is it because you give in the church? Everybody gives. Is it because you help the poor? Some people help the poor. Are you following what I'm saying? 
but there has to be and all of that is good but there has to be something to make you distinct the bible says they are it may be many voices in the world but there's none without significance there are many sounds and voices did you know that you are a sound you individually are a sound but the Bible says, but there's none without signification. Every sound has a meaning. But the Bible says, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, the Bible says, I shall be unto him the voice that speaketh a barbarian. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. That is the power that connects you to men. He said, there are many voices in the world, but you can be barbarian. That is why somebody can listen to you and not believe you, yet you're speaking the truth. And another one can see you and believe you. You're not barbaric, he's not barbaric. Or somebody can speak to you and you don't understand them. Or somebody can speak to you and you understand them. Now the reconciliation of understanding even as you are understood is a great mystery. Because nothing, nothing connects you to the world like understanding. If you are a minister and they cannot understand you, neither can you understand them. How can you draw them? Those are not things a gift does. Because a gift will create room for you, but it won't build a house. There's a difference. <laughs> it, it won't enlarge the room. There's another glory to enlarge it. And it's the authority of the Spirit that only comes from a man or woman who God has dealt with concerning the anointing. To understand the anointing that draws things and people to you and your heart is consecrated enough not to abuse it. Because before God does that, the first dealing is your heart. My son, give me your heart, the Bible says, and let your eyes observe my ways. When you give your heart to God, your eyes will start to see his ways. How does he judge? How does he deal with the fallen? How does he deal with the weak? How does he deal with a drug addict? How does he deal with a dysfunctional family? How does he deal with the indifferent? How does he deal with the weak? How does he deal with the broken? How does he deal with the hurting? How does he deal with the confused? How does he deal with, with, with the lost? How does he deal with the immature? How does he deal with the maturing? How? And this is important. Because why would God give you what you are not able to steward. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Bible is very clear. If you're faithful with a little, as the Bible says so, the Lord will trust you with what? With more. But little what? Little what? Faithful with little what? The revelation of the ways of God according to how much your heart is given to the Father. And in that which is revealed to you, sometimes it's those little small things that God has revealed to me that I must love this man unconditionally. It's those little small things. And then that very man hurts you. And then God says, but my way is to love him unconditionally. And then you are torn between carrying unbelief and forgiving this man and loving him unconditionally. And then you choose to keep your anger. And God says, even with this that I've revealed to you, you cannot keep. He says, even things without life. Are you hearing? Even things without life, except whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in sounds. Now the distinction comes. Now, what makes them different comes. You remember the question I asked you? What makes you different? What makes you exceptional? 
what makes you distinct. And Paul began with the things that don't have life, the things that don't have life. He says, even the things without life, giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in sounds. The Bible says, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? Oh my goodness, grammar. He did not say, what shall be known? Which is the pipe and which is the harp? Your title is not important. He said, what is piped, what is harped, your purpose is important. Even if you simply call me grace, it doesn't take away the anointing on my life. Because it's not the title, the teen, it's the content. Somebody shout hallelujah. And we're dealing with a generation that is so interested in being called titles. If you don't call him bishop, he can't walk. If you, if you don't call him pastor, he won't answer. It's not the separation of the harp from the pipe. That's division in the church. It is the understanding of what is harped, what is piped. What is the distinctive voice that you carry in this world? What makes your message different? Let me tell you. Now, I'm, I'm not boasting. I'm telling you the truth. Many people can teach and preach because God has graced many. But my print as an individual is different. It's different. I found my frequency and I understood it and I plugged into it. And God has given you yours as well. You, you just didn't find understanding to connect to it. And that's what we're trying to do. That God will give you something that will make your voice different. For his glory not for your glory but for his glory not for your exaltation but for his exaltation because God has chosen to work that way to save the world and even though we will have our distinctive marks individually there'll always be something that connects us as the body we'll just be different parts the nose, the eyes, the mouth, the hand will just be different parts but we'll all have our distinctive mark that makes us different for if the trumpet giveth an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself for war oh, if a trumpet gives an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself for war now the mandate of this trumpet was to blow to prepare men for the sound of war and it gave an uncertain sound and in the time when men were supposed to prepare for war, they stood back and the enemy came and ravaged them and killed them. Why? Because there was a trumpet perhaps that could not give the right sound. Who understands what I'm saying? Or there was even a trumpet worse off that probably did not have a sound because he did not know that it was a trumpet. Or even worse, there was a trumpet trying to harp He's an evangelist, but he's, he's fighting to be a pastor because he admires to be a pastor. Do you an evangelist? No, I'm a pastor. You are an evangelist? No, I'm a pastor. We have many people with misplaced offices because you attended to the need of the earth and not the revelation of heaven. To be available does not mean that you should perform in every function because you are desired and demanded to. Not every open door you should enter. Peter opened the door to the Gentile church, but he was not called for the Gentile church. But it takes a certain understanding to know Peter that this might be, you know, that one of used of you by God to open, but you were not called for the Gentile church. And we hear one day he went to Rome and the stories that are told by historians is was that he was killed in Rome and there's a reason why he was killed in Rome he was not supposed to leave Jerusalem oh no you have read of Paul the Bible says every time he went into the synagogues he was beaten those were Jews Paul why were you called sometimes we even attract unnecessary persecution and the Jews and proselytes which were in Judea when they heard that I was in Lystra they came and beat me up what were you doing in the synagogues God had called you to the Gentile. Stick to the Gentile. Keep hopping. Don't pipe. You'll mess it up. 
your message is good but where has God called you there are distinctions even within the anointing and these distinctions make you different and they exist in the spirit and if you've not found your distinction you have not yet fully understood the mystery of divine purpose when God comes to Mary and tells her that you are going to have a child Mary asks a question and says how shall it be seeing that I know no man now that is not a statement of unbelief rather it is actually a statement of or a question trying to understand the distinctiveness of divine purpose because in human history from the creation of the earth to that age she had never seen God do that it has never happened to anybody since the creation of the ages for a woman to conceive without a man some see her unbelief but the true vision of Mary the true the true way you should see it is that it had never happened before or that what was known was that a woman would only conceive through copulation being one with a man and now we have a mystery something is coming you are going to carry a child without sleeping with a man that had never happened so the words of surrender be done unto me according to thy will and after Mary it had never it has never happened it gave her a distinction unfortunately some venerated it instead of building understanding for their part the day Jesus opened the blind man the blind man's eye the Bible said that it had never been seen in human history that a blind eye had opened I showed it recently in my church meaning that even when we believe that with God all things are possible and any miracle that had ever happened from the beginning of the earth to that time they had never seen a blind man see of any miracle the Elijah's raised dead people but they had never seen a blind man see that was the first time they saw a blind man see it had never happened before it became a distinctive mark in the miraculous ministry of Jesus and then you go back in human history biblical history and then you see distinctive graces Moses gave the church or the people the commandments no man no man has repeated that except in the days of Jesus you understand what I'm saying and in how again <laughs> he comes to fulfill what God had put on Moses he says I didn't come to do away with the law but I came to fulfill it nobody can touch the distinction on Moses and the Lord started to show me the altar the spirit the heart behind that distinction I started to study Moses not as a man but as a man of God I started to study his prayer life I started to study his spirit I started to understand why the Bible says that he was the most humble man on the earth I understood what brokenness was I studied his place of relationship with God he tells Aaron and Miriam when I speak to prophets I speak to them in visions and dreams but that's not how I speak to Moses he never spoke to Moses in a vision and in a dream 
The Bible says he spoke to him mouth to mouth and the very similitude of God he beheld. This man would sit in the anointing and sit in the presence of God for days and he comes back and his face is radiating because of the glory of God upon his life. And he has both the revelation of grace and the law. That's why in Deuteronomy, the Bible says the righteousness of faith speaks this way. And it is Moses speaking. So he knows the difference between the righteousness of faith and the righteousness of works. And he sees where God is going. And he's preparing his spirit to prepare men to take them where they must understand. But he's beyond the law. He has the understanding beyond the law. That's why he says, this shall be a testimony against you. He didn't say against us. You are different. You just don't know yet. You have a distinction on your life. You just don't know yet. This is not for special men. This is for all of us who dare to believe. Because in the New Testament, he has revealed it to us. It's not an exclusivity of anointing. In the New Testament, there are no exclusivities. In the New Testament, we are all included. That's the only difference. You look at Paul. And Paul says, like a master builder was given me this grace to lay the foundation of the gospel. No other man will ever lay. Paul even warned let no foundation be laid again. Don't waste time going deep. You can only build higher. Don't waste time. That's his distinction. The church of Jesus Christ since then has been building on Paul. And interestingly, the Lord showed me we are just building on his letters. I wonder how those who sat under him received because it's you know historians tell you Paul would speak for six hours there were no timers those days now if the church of Jesus Christ the institution of the church billions of men have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through a man's letters what were his sermons like and what manner of consecration would a man need then you see the pattern of the wilderness after the conversion in Damascus immediately God takes him to Arabia like the distinction of Moses after killing a man in the world in the sun God takes him to the desert too like the distinction of Abraham God takes him out of his father kin, his, his father's house kin, folk and nation and takes him to Canaan that with every distinction, there is a consecration that throws a man in the wilderness. And three things happen in the wilderness. Oh, God kills you. Number two, he teaches you to understand his voice so that he can instruct you and show you things no man can show you. But number three, he tries you to maturity. And, and, and that will also take some of the people you're going to work with who have nasty attitudes. And God tells you, be patient with him. And a man will attack you on social media and God tells you don't touch him. Man, don't touch him. But if you have not gone through the wilderness, you cannot do it. I has not seen. Ear has not heard. It has not entered the hearts of men. The things God has prepared to them that love him. And he has revealed it. If you didn't get it, now you've gotten it in this conference. By his spirit. For the spirit which searches the deep things of God went out and searched out and defined your mark. It's inside your spirit. Now you're going to pray it out. You're my friend again, anointed one, most holy, my friend.